Dr. Wild Yu, and I'm an English language educator for more than 10 years now, and I'm also a TESOL certified learning specialist. As a university professor, I've been teaching IELTS some of other English-related courses to university students and young professionals. In 2014, I officially represented my country in a language education micro-scholarship grant as a visiting professor at the University of California, Los Angeles, USA, sponsored by the U.S. Embassy Department of State. Today you're watching another video as you journey towards being an international TESOL certified educator. I take delight and honor to congratulate you in advance as you take such a big leap in your ESL and EFL career. Yes, you may now give a pat to your shoulder. Take a deep breath because the next thing you will know will increase your level of awareness on how to teach English to speakers of other languages effectively. Now let's start the ball rolling. In this video, we're going to talk about second language acquisition principles and theories. As time goes by, we know that methodologies and strategies change, but bear in mind that principles do not. There is always truth in what you believe in. For a warm-up, please pause and answer the following questions. Number one, how do you view language teaching or language learning in general? Number two, how should language be taught? Number three, why should language be taught this way? Exactly, education is anchored in some theories of learning. Take notes if you have to. What is SLA? SLA refers both to the study of individuals or groups who are learning a language subsequent to learning their first language, L1, as young children, and to the process of learning target language, TL. In trying to understand the process of second language acquisition, we're seeking to answer three basic questions. One, what exactly does the L2 learner come to know? Number two, how does the learner acquire this knowledge? And number three, why are some learners more successful than others? Why study SLA theories and principles? As mentioned, theories make us critical educators. Theories, premises, assumptions, and SLA offer us perspectives on how people acquire knowledge of the target language. We need these in the language classroom as we teachers develop the curriculum, lessons, materials, or as we create situations that will help our students acquire or learn language. The naturalistic approach or the creative construction theory. This theory is based on the belief that language acquisition is innate. We are born with a certain system of language. Numerous linguists support this theory of innateness. Noam Chomsky, the leading proponent, claims that each human being possesses a set of innate properties of language which is responsible for a child's mastery of native language in such a short time. Brown, 2002. This mechanism is called LAD, or Language Acquisition Device. Stefan Krashen's Input Hypothesis. This belief is based on five hypotheses. Number one, Krashen claims that there is difference between acquisition and learning. Acquisition is subconscious or intuitive process, while learning is intentional, in which learners attend to form, figure out rules, and are generally conscious of their own process. Number two, the monitor hypothesis, which has nothing to do with acquisition but with learning. The learned system acts only as an editor or monitor making minor changes and polishing what the acquired system has produced. Krashen believes that there are three conditions necessary for monitor use, sufficient time, focus and form, 
and knowing the rules. Number three, the natural order hypothesis. It states that we acquire the rules of language in a certain order that is predictable. It does not mean, though, that each learner will acquire grammatical structures in exactly the same order. Number four, the input hypothesis states that it is important for the acquirer to understand language that is a bit beyond his or her current level of competence. This means that if the learner is on level one, the input he or she gets should be I plus one. Number five, the effective filter theory. The effective variables play a facilitative role in second language acquisition. Learners with high motivation, self-confidence, and a good self-image, and a low level of anxiety are better equipped for success in SLA. Anxiety can raise the effective filter and form a mental block that prevents comprehensible input. Moreover, Krashen suggests that a teacher needs to provide a compelling input in the classroom. An input so interesting that learners will forget that they are in another language. Other experts call this a state of flow. The Noticing Hypothesis by Richard Smith in 1993. This theory challenges Krashen's assumption that only the unconscious processing of language information is involved in the acquisition process, especially for older learners. Noticing is defined as the mental registering of an event. Learners cannot learn the grammatical features of a language unless they notice them. Noticing alone does not mean that learners automatically acquire language. Rather, the hypothesis states that noticing is the essential starting point for acquisition. Richard Smith, 1990-1993. In language acquisition, it refers to the conscious awareness of grammatical forms. Evidence for noticing is demonstrated when learners can verbalize the experience of becoming aware of forms and can describe their structures, meaning, and functions. Smith and Frota, 1986. Swain, in 1998. According to the noticing hypothesis, noticing is crucial in the SLA process. So, question, what is primarily the goal of English language teaching? Try answering this question for a few minutes. Do you also believe that language is primarily built for mutual intelligibility? Is it for communication or do you believe that it is arbitrary? Communicative Language Teaching Theory by Dell Himes in 1966. Theory stipulates that the goal of ELT is communicative competence. It is to use the language correctly and appropriately to accomplish communication goals. CLT's theory of learning pays systematic attention to functional as well as structural aspects of language. Littlewood, 1981. Canale and Swain, in 1980, found that there are four dimensions of communicative competence. Linguistic competence, social linguistic competence, discourse competence, and strategic competence. CLD's theory of learning emphasizes real communication as the communicative principle. The cognitive approach. Cognitive psychologists claim that one of the main features of SLA is the building up of a knowledge system and eventually be called on automatically for speaking and understanding. Although we know that the process of automatizing and restructuring are central to this approach, it is not clear what kinds of structures will be automatized through practice and what will be restructured. There you have them, fellow language educators. I hope you get bits and pieces of insights about principles, theories, and approaches about second language acquisition. You may share some of your observations and assumptions about language teaching too. You may find a partner and discuss on how did you acquire or learn language. Is it through practice, imitation, repetition, or observation? Is it through modeling, listening, or parroting? I would be glad if you share some of your insights too. I hope that you find this video valuable. Learning a new language is indeed having a new soul. 
Now let us have the portion of the training where you were asked to find a partner and discuss to each other some of the insights we just have explored together. It is time for you to review some ideas and concepts related to the topic second language acquisition, principles and theories. You may talk to your partner alternately. Are you ready to have a recapitulation? Let's get started. watching this video and if you think you will be learning by exposing yourself to your next videos don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you won't be missing out any of our videos as a bonus for reaching this far here are some compelling topics that you might be interested in as an educator which among these topics would you like us to cover next Leave your answer to the comment section below and we'll sure to give you some extra inspiration to those who like and engage with us. You may also comment some specific topics deemed important for teachers. Thank you for watching and see you again. This is Professor Noel Yu, signing off.